Growing up as a, as a biracial woman in America, I never felt like I had permission to even acknowledge that I was also half black. Being a black woman in America, I feel like me, being as radical as I am, being as unapologetic as I am, I'm a form of protest in myself. Being black in America has always been, it's always been a struggle because I've been like uh, pulled over multiple times just by walking and always been, always felt like I needed to be like a little bit on edge because I don't know what, what's, if it's gonna go south or not. I enter a room or a space or, or a restaurant or, or a place of, you know, a public place and I'm like always aware of like who's looking at me and how are people looking at me and like you, you just get used to like have, having to be on edge. I, we've had experiences, me and my, me and my kids, when we're, we've been out. Those experiences then give you a perspective and then you have this kind of like gut reaction to like if I'm going to go out. What am I going to be experiencing? Who am I going to have to like <laughs> have a confrontation with today? I guess like what's heartbreaking really is that the fact that we still kind of have to we have to fight for our shit. You know what I mean? Like we still have to like struggle for like our own rights. Of course, we're free, but are we truly free to express ourselves? Are we truly free to live? You know, without the fear of losing our lives or being hurt? You know, whenever we go out in the street, I don't think that's the idea of free. Once you understand what they did in order to kind of sanitize history, I mean, it's. It's so huge that it's in school systems, it's in our you know, economy, employment, capitalism, all of that is built on white supremacy. America was built off of slavery and enslaving people. Um, and so to think that somehow in the 60s when there was a civil rights movement that that just went away is just kind of um, irrational. And, and they, they teach you to think that it's in the past, right? But it's not, uh, because people are still dying. Ahmaud Arbery was actually, um, I was still like stressed out and, and sad and frustrated about that situation. And then, um, and then Breonna Taylor, and then, and then George Floyd, and it just was like, fuck. <laughs> what does it take for people to realize, you know, that this is a problem? There's been multiple police brutalities, multiple police killings. I mean, let's, like, Colin Kaepernick. That was huge for a long time. No one talks about that anymore. Seeing, you know, my community continue to speak out, continue to say what we need in this time, and at the same time, still be ignored, still be stifled in some ways that that's heartbreaking to me. I see a lot of people thinking Black Lives Matter is political when it's a human rights issue, you know? We're not saying everyone's life doesn't matter. We just want you to understand what we're going through and what we have to face. We're all just people, but if I see somebody with a badge and they come towards me with like some hostility and I haven't even done anything, why do I have to feel like I'm, I'm on edge? You're always kind of, kind of aware of, of all the negative stereotypes um, and all the prejudices that, that, uh, that people hold against you. And, and so now you have all these negative perceptions that you have to, to kind of push back against in some way. This race issue touches on everything, but like so many institutions are controlled by, by white people. I, I have to deal with, with, with my white American brothers and sisters on a regular basis, you know what I'm saying? Whereas they, they don't necessarily need to engage uh, with, with people of color. As, as black people, as a people of color, we just want to feel like we belong and that we're welcome. 
We need people to be willing to learn more about our culture and be willing to change their opinions, you know, and understand it's okay to change it if you had a different opinion before. White people's responsibility is to get just as mad. Once they find out what's really going on, if they care and are compassionate and, and they believe in equality for all, they should be mad just like we are because it's not fair and it's dehumanizing and people are dying and that should piss you off. What are the conversations that you as a white person are having with your other white friends? What jokes are allowed or not allowed? We need to have these conversations. Why, why is the black culture being treated this way? Why is police brutality happening? Why? That's the question right now. So I think if we can start having these conversations, we can, we can take action. I believe it is the responsibility of the white community right now is to listen, to learn, and to effectively help. Ask black people what they need in this moment, actually listen to them, and help from there. Don't prescribe help. Don't give us the help you think we need. Ask us and we'll tell you. Treat us the way we deserve to be treated. And again, tell us we matter. It's, it's that simple.